Welcome everyone to another video. My name is Haggot, aka Hags, and today you're tuned in to the Q&A. And this is a long time waiting because I've asked these questions quite some time ago in this video right here where I purchased my new car. Done some questions on there, but we've got plenty more questions to go through and hopefully you learn a bit more about me as well in the meantime. So we'll start off straight away with the first question. Where do you live and how far are your property investments? And I live in London and realistically, going outside of London is not something I've done plenty of time before I started property investing. But I thought it's time to start property investing. My time has come, this was about three years ago. And I thought, let's go out of my area and let's see what there is. So I set a radius of maximum of around two to two and a half hours outside of London. I wouldn't really go further than that. Not because I don't have the time because this is my full time job, but it just wouldn't be able to sustain all of that time traveling to get there, to not have much time to do certain things such as viewings, check up on refurb, etc. And from there, I started viewing properties, learning about different areas, and started finding specific locations which I was happy with and just stuck to those. So the next question is, do you sell your properties through auction or an estate agent? And I really like this question because a lot of the times people are in a rush to sell their properties, so they just go down the auction route. I would just go straight to an estate agent. I wouldn't go through auction because of course you got that desperation look. But what I would also do is just go through a local estate agent who knows about the area, who sold plenty around the area and give them the opportunity to sell it for me. And the next question is, other than flip projects, is there any other ways of making good money in property? And there is definitely plenty of other ways, such as sourcing properties for people. Once you create a good list of people looking to purchase and they don't have much time to go out to view properties, that's one option. Another one is project managing builds. That's something I'm happy to do if someone contacts me, which I've done once or twice before, and I will project manage from the moment of finding a builder or going to the viewing, all this sort of stuff, buy to lets, whether it's a HMO, whether it's Airbnb, short term lets, or even just a standard residential buy to let. It all really comes down to the property, how much you bought it for, the refurb, and all this sort of stuff you need to factor in as well. And the next question is, how do you find market deals to flip properties? And to be honest, it's quite simple. It's very much just in front of you. You can look at Rightmove, Zoopla, of course, they're both pretty much the same, but they definitely have deals on there. It just means you have to be consistent, call up the agents, go view properties. So it does take a lot of time. Auction, like I've mentioned, great deals on auction, especially if you've dealt with the auction before, they have a file of what you purchased previously and the higher up on the list because you have purchased from them and they know that you're a reputable buyer. And not only that, of course, there are off market deals where you go around dropping letters off, which I do plenty of times. Anytime I do a viewing, I'll take about 10, 20 letters, drive around the area, look for properties which need doing up and just drop a letter through. What are your property investing goals for this year? Beginning of this year, we were a bit shaky, ideally, finalize a sale on my bungalow, do another property, which I have purchased, but we'll speak about that later in the video. And if I could do one or two more flips, one definitely, but if I can squeeze in one more at the end of the year, then that's ideal. So we'll be looking for two or three properties to flip this year. Would you ever do the refurbishment yourself? I get this question all the time because you can see through my flips that I'm just showing you around the property. I don't look like I'm getting my hands dirty but I would say I do my best to do as much as I can. So as much as I can is only a limit, but I would do the driveway, clean that up, tidy that up, make it look nice and presentable. The garden, 100%, these properties I buy, usually the gardens are in terrible condition. So I'll be the one going down to cut it, to clean it up and the rest as well. I would leave the internal works for my builder. I would do some painting, which I've done on a render of my last property. So again, it's just a few bits here and there, which I'll do to just save that little bit extra money. If I could do the whole house, I would. What is the best choice for a kitchen and bathroom refurbishment? Don't complicate this stuff too much. A kitchen, white or gray? 
keep it simple. I know you want to go for something a bit extravagant, maybe different colors, but for me, it's a gloss finish, white or gray, black tabletop, or even a wood finish, oak finish color, should I say, and just a soft closing doors. Other than that, pick the handles that you like. I've gone for a gold one previously. I've gone for just silver one, chrome ones, because when someone moves in, they want to design the rest of the property to their style, bring out the colors through that way. And moving on to the bathroom, just a plain white bathroom set, a toilet, sink, and a bath or just a walk-in shower. There's no need to complicate that any more than what it is. You can maybe get something a bit fancy with the fancy taps or a soft closing toilet seat. All these little things, if they're good value for money, they're slightly discounted, they're in your budget, then feel free to go for them. But besides that, keep it simple, get tiles around the bath and the rest white walls. The next question is, what will be the largest disruption to high street agents? And I really, really like this question. And to be perfectly honest with you, I think there's still a long way to go before we even have that conversation. Reason being is because when someone's purchasing a property, this is their most expensive asset. And most of the time, people only do this once in their lifetime, maybe twice at most. What people like is face-to-face -face communication or constant phone call communication. So when you're viewing a property, you want someone there to explain to you what's new, what's been done, the layout of the property, and just give you a better visualization of the property. Whereas there are online agents such as Purple Bricks, Strike, and a few other ones. So I'm not saying the business model isn't great. I'm sure it works for them. So there's no real communication with anyone in this whole process, but it's definitely something that would be spoken about maybe in the next 10, 15, 20 years if technology makes things a lot more easier to process these things. Have you bought a new property investment this year? And I've had some things pop up along the way at the beginning of this year, so it's been slightly quiet, but I have purchased a new property investment. I haven't put it out there yet, but subscribe, like, and comment, because I'm gonna do a full series on this again. It's a full refurbishment again, and I can't wait to show you that. And also, in the meantime, I am looking for new properties, so I will be doing live negotiations, possibly, or, live viewings so again drop a like if you want to see that but those are the questions for today i hope you enjoyed the video but i've been Haggot, aka hags don't forget the name and i'll catch you in the next video